Welcome to another Team Solomon Circus Live Duel. Today we have Angus Miller. He's playing uh, Danger Charlements, as you guys saw on the channel. And I'm playing Sprite on the right. Um, yeah, so here we're going to start off. We won the die roll here. We're going to activate Product Prosperity for a three. Uh, we're playing, uh, we're playing, you know, pretty much Purist, right? Uh, the Diva build, but we're playing the Beavers instead. Um, I thought that, you know, you don't really need the uh, Hulk. So we're going to banish three here. We're going to see a Prosperity, a Jet, and then uh, Imperm. We're going to add the Jet here. We're going to Normal Summon the Jet. Activate the Jet in hand. He's going to chain the Halfness here. Um, he's going to Mill. We do see a Rhino Heart, another Halfness. Um, jet's going to Resolve. Adding the Starter here. And then we're going to activate the uh, Halfness. He's actually Halfness. We're going to chain the DD Crow. You know, making that not resolve. We're going to overlay the Gigantic Sprite. Activate the effect here. Uh, we're going to summon with Swap Frog. You know, sending uh, Rodent Toten. Standard combo here. We all know Link Away for Elf. Elf effect's going to activate, targeting the Swap. Swap effect's going to send to Graveyard, the other Swap Frog. And then Rodent is going to activate here. Banishing the swap, summon itself out. Uh, here we're going to overlay and make the toad. Setting two or setting three cards here in passing. You know, not the greatest opening from, but we still end up getting the full sprite combo here. Um, here he, we do not have anything in the standby phase. He moves to attack. Uh, happens to battle position you know most likely going to be able to like crash into the uh so he's going to attempt that in our battle phase we're going to be forced to stay in main phase activating the elf um summoning up the jet and then adding the starter here he's going to activate rota you know maybe letting him beat over the elf is a good idea because then we can't get you know our damage and then we still have the um we still have the Toad Negate, but understandable. He's going to normal summon the Rhino Heart that he added off the, uh, the, um, Rota. We're going to chain our Imperm there, so, uh, you know, we're not letting him resolve that crazy card. He's going to link away into Dark here. We're looking in our Graver to see what Dark we have. Unfortunately, you know, he still does have a battle phase, so, like, there's a lot he can do. We activate Starter here, as well as the Imperm, to get out the Carrot, you know, trying to stop that, and that, you know, uh, that Spell and Trap Negate that, you know, he most likely is going to have. You know, you waste it through the monster negates now, so we have to go for the spell and trap negates. Here's gonna activate a danger card. And we're going to hit the jackalope here. Jackalope effects wanna activate. And here he's just thinking. He has a starlight where we put down our super, you know. Uh, he summons out the um, level four Mothman. Very, very good. And here he's just thinking, you know, he has three cards in hand. We have two negates. Um, or he is, yeah, three, he's going to enter battle phase, crash into, uh, the toad. Toad effect's going to activate here. Um, we're just reading it. Or not toad effect's going to activate, uh, charm effect's going to activate here. Um, getting the dark, 
getting a dark monster to hand i'm not sure what he's going to add um he's asking if he knows what we have in hand we show him the starter i believe he's gonna add halfness here yeah adding halfness here we see a trap card in hand as well just showing him a column of the imperma is negating definitely do not want to play into that so here's going to activate desires such a crazy card and we have to think we're going to carrot negate that you know not letting that draw through happen um and here you know we're going to let that go through i were thinking about that you know letting it go through we're going to activate the uh the effect of toad to set it to negate and set which leaves him with two cards here um and then we're gonna add back with the and he has foolish burial which is crazy pretty much full combo um the last card there you know we ended up we could have let the hat this resolve i guess and you know maybe going to he'll go into a redoer or something like that you know he already activated in graveyard so maybe it was correct to to let it resolve but you know it is what it is he summons the or he dumps the merly merly effects can activate here getting the halfness in the kit or to get out kit i should say kit effects going to resolve adding the merly from deck to hand and then merly effects are half not halfness kit's going to activate summoning out the merly merly's going to affect going to mill two as well as kit milling the five milling the eight you know hitting the shiren a halfness a snow um are hitting two three shirens instant fusion as well as the super uh dark ruler no more you know having lots of effects can activate here he knows both our cards in hand and i gotta say that you know he's he's pretty much having the advantage here Going here for the big Kaleido. Such a beautiful card. Um, an amazing card as well. You know, not being able to use it as a fusion material is insane. It ends up uh, beating the Super Poly. Because you're not able to Super Poly with that on. You're not able to Super with that on field, so. Extremely difficult. Also, very hard to shuffle it back into the deck, or into the extra deck, so important to note he's gonna make uh he's gonna you know make drug spell level one and uh or not your hero Sapelio is going to make elf level or carrot level one you know, getting into that you know stopping us from being able to do that and it looks very very bad for us um i do not think we have anything we can do here does not look good. We're gonna activate Sprite Starter here. I'm just gonna summon out our blue, or most likely gonna be blue. In attack position, blue is gonna activate its effects. It's gonna chain the Dragos to Pelly here, making level one and negating its effect as well. So we're here we're left with a draw uh, with draw for turn as well as the um, our normal summon of swap frog we're going to flip up halfness here looking at what we can make in the extra deck not very much we are a level two lock due to starter here so quite unfortunate for us it's not like we could just normal summon swap frog and then go into uh go into the link five here We're gonna normal the swap frog. No effect. Or actually the effect, dumping the last swap. Elf effect here is gonna activate. I think elf effect here is going to activate. Or no, the trap card's gonna activate here. Um, you know, Book of Mooning the Swap Frog. And uh 
Sharon is sending the Sharon. Sharon effect's going to activate. Um, the fusion summon. And here he's just thinking of what he's going to fusion summon. He's going to go for the kit with the Sharon as well as. Uh, Yes, he's just looking for the other one. So the two Shirens are going to summon, or the kit. Kit effect here is going to activate. And we're going to Ash Blossom that, you know, and having no cards in hand. Not looking good, you know, having nothing here. We should just scoop it up, but uh, uh, he's going to activate Snow. You know, just, uh, just for the overkill here. We definitely do not have anything we can activate. Uh, we're still banishing the Rodent Toten. Um, then here we're going to see Elf summon back the um, Merly, and he's going to mill three. You know, we're just doing this to get more more views out of his deck. You know, just trying to see what he's going to make. Um, here we're going to make our own Elf summon out the Toad. But uh, we're not able to win here. We have one negate. You know, we can't attack the Elf. The Snow, it doesn't really do anything. So here we're just going to scoop it up, you know, realizing that it is game. Um, and moving on to game two, we do see that he's maining Super Poly, as well as Dark Lunar, which is very, very interesting there. Pretty standard, though, for tier, but, uh, you know, it, it is good for us to know that. You know, we want to get as most information as we can game one out of him. Looking back at that game, um, you know, he just ha he had more than me. I'm not really sure if I uh, misplayed. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think I should have done instead for the game one. Um, sometimes you just get outplayed, right? You know, they have more gas than you. Well, what, what can you do, right? It's just a game of luck. Um, we could have maybe not negated that halfness effect with the toad because, um, I guess it wasn't that important to negate, but we could have all just negated what he summoned or what he was going to do. Um, I don't think a level, uh, a rank four or a, or a, a link to is that threatening so but it's okay we'll try to win it in game two and three we have the advantage due to going uh choosing who's gonna go first once again though so we're gonna go first here we're gonna play the product prosperity again choosing three Milling a Prod of Prosperity, a D Shifter, and a DD Crow. You know, very, very bad draw. You do not want to see the Extravagance or, or the, I guess, the Prosperity or the Shifter. So we're forced to grab the Crow here. Now we're summoning Swap Fire, sending the Dupe, especially summoning the Blue here, adding the Red, which should let our opponent know we already have the Sprite in hand, or the Jet in hand. We're going to summon Blue, summon Red, then summon Jet, getting out the start Starter here. And here we're going to go right into the uh, right into the elf, summon back the uh, swap frog here. You know, activating the effect, sending the other swap, banishing the swap to get out rodent toten, and then we're going to overlay into the toad. We do not uh, do gigantic here, so we are technically able to get nib. We do have two monster negates up. Um, but still, Gigantic is really good to stop Nib. You know, not having to waste one of your monster negates. We're going to start her here. You know, not the smartest play. We're going to summon out the Carrot here. Um, you should always save the starter for the Dark Ruler no more. You definitely do not need to use it right now. And then we're going to just pass. Um, very, very bad play on us. You should have set the starter. We're going to activate the Totally Awesome during the standby phase, summoning out the swap frog another really bad play on us because he can just super poly he's gonna lava golem us here getting the elf and the toad for the lava golem uh toad effects gonna here is gonna think i'm gonna return the toad most likely to the extra deck he's not a danger um we're going to hit the nessie here it's going to activate its effects. 
which is crazy. Now he's a dark aqua, you know, perfect for the uh, for the tier monsters. He's gonna search himself a uh, a Mothman. Here he thinks that we're sniping him, so he's gonna make us die, roll a dice, but we still end up hitting it. I activate the effect. We both draw, and I just discard the jet. He's gonna discard the Merlin. He's gonna activate it. I'm gonna DD Crow. He's going to chain the call by the grave. We're gonna chain the jet. And here he's going to normal summon the Merly. And here we're thinking, what are we going to do here? We're going to activate the red, hitting the Swap Frog. You know, definitely an interesting choice. We really want to keep the Swap Frog on field. He's going to call by the grave, but we have the Ash Blossom. Once again, that call by the grave, uh, not call by the grave, foolish. Having that foolish burial in hand is absolutely full combo we have the ash so we end up taking that game foolish burial is such a crazy card in the deck um you know it's it literally just full combo uh, send any of your monsters and just like fusion summon i mean it's not it's not a, like obviously it's not a, just a one card combo you do need to have set up you can't just start it off and you know unless you have another uh a tier in hand, you can actually just send a Merly because they can fuse from hand as well. So, uh, fun fact to know it's just not always dead, it's just it's an insane. Tier is an amazing deck, plus, with the Shizu cards coming out, uh, it comes even stronger. I do really like the dangers, but I think you guys probably know me to love dangers, anyways. Uh, I used to play Danger Dark World, there's no deck profiles of Danger Dark World in the channel, but I really do like it. And here, we're going to go back into the gameplay. So he ended up losing, so he's going to choose to go first. He actually said Foolish Burial once again. Um, and we're going to see, you know, it's just the power of Foolish Burial just from starting off. I wonder if he knows that the card is at one. He's going to send the Merly here. Its effect is going to activate. Um, we're going to DD Crow it. He's going to activate the Shiren effect, sending the Mothman summon itself, then milling three. It does hit uh, Halfness, so Halfness effect can activate. It's going to use itself and the Shiren to go into most likely the kit here. Act kit effect's going to activate, adding the Merlin. Um, and here we're going to use the effect, summon out the Merlin, you know, milling eight with the kit and as well the Merlin. We do see a Deck Devi. Um, crazy, crazy card. The trap here is going to actually be adding him a, uh, adding him the, uh, Chairman Monster. He's going to add himself the Rhino Heart here. He's going to normal summon the Rhino Heart, activating the effect, sending the Shiren. Activating that effect here, you know, using itself and... The, uh, the fusion monster to go into the Drago Sepelia here. We do know he has a Super Poly in hand. We don't know, but uh, we know that looking at you know the gameplay, he's going to set two here and pass. Interesting that he does not uh, link away, but you know, he does have the Super Poly, so he doesn't really care. We're going to start by activating Dark Ruler no more here. Activating the Prosperity, going for three once again. We're going to see a Nibiru, a starter, as well as an Imperm. You know, obviously choosing the starter here. We're going to uh, normal summon Jet. He's going to activate the effect here, flipping the uh, monster face down by, you know, banishing or sending his sending his uh, his tier monster to the graveyard. Activating that effect, summoning out to the kit. Kit effect is going to activate. We're going to Ash Blossom that. We're going to activate starter here. Summon out to the blue. Woo, that's going to activate something with the carrot. Here we drop the carrot. We're going to special summon the carrot here. Special summon the jet. Activating the effect of jet. Getting these smashers. Uh, I would honestly say that's a misplay as well. We should have added the starter here. Um, but, you know, we can't really tell. Maybe his opponent has nothing in hand. Here's going to read the smashers.
We're going to overlay into the gigantic. We're going to act with the gigantic effect here. Summon out the swap frog. Swap frog, if I can send dupe, uh, rodent toad, not dupe frog. Uh, you know, summoning out jet. Jet effects can activate. Summon out the swap. Swap effects can activate. Dump in the swap. Rodent toad is going to affect. Banishing the swap. Summoning out the rodent toad. Overlay into the totally awesome here. You know, very, very standard. Reading Smashers, once again, you know, making sure he understands the card completely. Uh, the card is a lot of text, but for absolutely no reason other than lore, um, it can banish like a Therion. We're going to set that and pass our turn. He's going to uh, draw for turn here, and we're going to see a activate the Super Poly in the draw phase. This card in the Shiren here, using the Elf um, and the Monster to get at the Garua here. Going to activate the effect... And uh, we're going to Toad Negate the kit here, but that's going to unfortunately just be game for him. Um, congratulations, Angus.